You're probably seeing something right in front of me here. I've, 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 I've grown a lantern. That's it. That's the a break. beautiful lantern. It's a beautiful right lantern there, yeah. that I've got here. Um, and, and it is a very, very exciting. I'll tell you why. Because I'm about to introduce our special guest. Because not only is he a Muazzin and a Kari, he's also a man of great inspiration. Please welcome to the show, Hassan Rasool. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, now, uh, we've got so much to talk about uh, with you, uh, <laughs> Sheikh. But let's let's start with the lantern because it is mm. so such a beautiful uh, lantern. And I, I notice you take it with you everywhere you go. Tell me about it. What's, what's, what's the significance of the lantern? Yeah, I mean, look at it. It's rusting. Mm -hmm. And it's the same as our lives. It's withering away. But the light inside is what matters uh -huh. and what we are attracted to. And that's, it's a reminder for us to, to nurture light within us uh -huh. and remember that our outer shells is just crumbling away before our eyes. Wow, which wow. is so powerful. I mean, and you can tell, because I mean, obviously more on this side, but you can see it's, it's rusting away. And I guess that's the external. I mean, look, you know, someone like me, look how much I've grayed over time. That's me. <laughs> no. Well, yeah. the, the pair of us, not quite clearly. Quite, still got a very young Arthur here. They, 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 well, <laughs> moisturising. <laughs> that, that means the Noor is both within no, and without. Look at that. I mean, yeah, but yeah. talking about Noor, I mean, it, even though, as you say, you know, it's crumbling on the exterior mm. and everything, it's quite beautiful. It's got a very kind of antique feel to it as well, yeah. I've got to say. Um, when, how did you... Discover, how did you find this? And tell us the story about how you came across this lamp. Yeah, I like ancient things. Uh -huh. I like things from uh, afar and, 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 the, and the past. Because something inside of us is always, always you know, we, we hear all these ancient stories, but you want a taste of it. Of course. Mm. You know, at the moment, it's on the shelves. Yeah. We need to remove them from the shelves and bring them into our lives. Mm. So that's these, these ancient uh, uh, memorabilia, if you uh -huh. like, or... Uh, you know, nostalgia. Yeah, uh, we've got rich history with our mm. uh, with our past. Mm -hmm. uh, the modern world, as as advanced as it is, that's fantastic. Yeah. we've advanced, but we've retrogressed to such a alarming rate. Uh, that's why I feel that we need to find these little ways of getting mm. back. Most definitely. To our, I mean, it's interesting thing you, you, you mentioned there about, about ancient and about looking back at some of the, you know, and, and taking lessons from from, yes. from, from from set items. And one thing I'm really excited about is we've actually got a copy of the Quran here. And we're talking about ancient items here, sure. a Quran which is over a hundred years old. It is, yes. Um, I, I manage. I feel very blessed to have this in my possession. It's uh, you know something I bought recently from an Englishman, mm. um, and experts are saying it's more than a hundred years old. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, you look at the cover, it's... Uh, where, where was this printed? Do, do, do you know where, 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 he, which country it came the, from? The person I bought it from was, uh, well, he is uh, an elderly Englishman who, who uh, specializes in ancient manuscripts. And he right. said he got this in an auction somewhere in the Middle East. Uh, but if you, if you look at, uh, even like, you don't get them made like this anymore. There's oh, like, wow, so there's like a, an illustration of, is that the Medina, yeah, Muslim it's, Medina, isn't it's it? It's etchings yeah. of Makkah and Medina, yeah. but, but old school, like really old. Let's, uh -huh. let's, 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 let's just turn that into the let's camera. Look. So if we, we can, can just point it this yeah. way, so we can, all, we, get, uh, we can share this. If you just yeah. angle it a little bit lower, um, so we can have a little look at the, the, the and, pictures. And, and, and then you've got this beautiful colour bound, you know. There we go, there, there we go. go. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so, it's just, just an illustration in the ground. That's both the, 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 the yeah. great masjids of Mecca and Medina, really, isn't it? It's, it's yeah. beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And there is a bit of history from it. And you've mentioned before mm. that yes. um, this uh, Quran, because it's, it's more than 100 years old and you've mm. procured it, it gives you great inspiration. Well, I haven't said that. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. I, I just, I, 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 I imagine it gives you great inspiration. Well, all uh, Qurans give us inspiration. Uh -huh. This very text is our inspiration for the very breathing, our uh -huh. daily lives. Mm. So, uh, yes, as personally, because I've mentioned about what uh, makes me tick, the remembrance of the past, this is definitely something that's uh, dear to my heart. And, you know? and do you find that there's an increase in people looking for kind of Islamic artifacts, Islamic history now? Do you yeah, think things are changing? I think, think? The, the West always had an obsession with, yeah. uh, with uh, Orientalism. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I found this, uh, like even when I dressed in my garbs, and I, I don't feel any sort of, uh, you know, uh, trepidation or, or hesitation walking on the underground. Mm -hmm. 
you know. Now, I know some of our sisters or brothers with beards or very overtly, they appear to be Muslim. Sure. Mm. But there's something inside of them that's, uh, you know, that lack of confidence of who they are. Yeah. But if you know the history, people used to marvel mm. on, on, on uh, the Sahaba. Yeah. And the, the people of, the righteous people, right? So when I walk on the underground, it's what's inside, like I said, what's inside of you to have the confidence that there's yeah. beauty, there's light, there's purity. And this is how I don't view you as a, you know, as a human being. Yeah. I view you as a soul. And I believe that souls recognize yeah. this light. No, so much does. so on an underground, packed as it may be. People, you, you see, you're not doing it for them to marvel. Sure, yeah. You, you want to marvel. You, you see, if you're yeah, marveling yeah. at your Lord, then others may marvel at you. Most certainly. But, but that's not your prerogative, you see. No, no, of course not. You've got to be not. very careful and guard your intent. Yeah. So, 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 would, would, so, so talking about the tube, yeah. uh -huh. would you go on the tube with your lantern in hand? I have. You have? Of course. I think we've got some images of yeah, you. Yeah, we do. Oh, there, there, you there, there, there you are, there you are, with your lantern. Uh, at, uh, that's, not, that's a train station, I think. And where are you there? That's Houston Station. That's Houston Station. There's a huge crowd around you as well. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure people uh, kind of come up to you, ask you questions. How do you respond to people when they're like, oh, so what's going on? What, what do people, so non-Muslims, I imagine, right? Especially because you're you know, being based in London. Yeah, yeah. Non-Muslims must approach you all the time. It must be quite, it's a peculiar sight for them, I imagine, mm. right? Uh, because obviously, you know, I, traveling on the underground, I see Muslim yeah. people in Muslim mm. attire all the time and yeah. don't think twice about it. But I imagine for a, a, an outsider or a Western person or a non-Muslim person to see somebody in the attire and with this, uh, with this beautiful lamp, you know, how do, how do people speak to you? What, what do you kind of frequently hear from people? It's more intrigue uh -huh. and it's uh, more a smile. How does that manifest itself? Oh, uh, it's, it's the visual, uh, you know, delight that makes them go, mm. it's, it's a change from the mundane. Uh -huh. So if it was something opposite to this, something not beautiful, sure. remember we, are, we, we like to, you know, to... Uh, to go towards beauty. But if it was something opposite, then you might get the opposite uh -huh. uh, reaction. Mm. Sure. But like I said, what they're seeing yeah. and feeling. Mm. See, I'm not so interested in what you see yeah. or what anyone sees. It's what you feel. Mm. Because the more you see, the less you feel. The more you feel, in fact, you'll see nothing. So, so when people have come up and spoken to you, what, what kind of things do they say to you? Did you get that? I did. I'm trying to register mm. it, actually. No, but once you do sure. register that... The more you feel, the less you see, is what you said. Correct, because right, okay. what we see around you, it, it, it dictates our, our day. Okay. Because everything, we've got an opinion about something, uh -huh. we criticise everything, sure. everything's an issue. God, that you sounds know. like me. I'll tell you that <laughs> right now, yeah. But if you move all that aside, yeah. move it aside uh -huh. and feel... Because it's just you and your Lord. It's who you're going to end up with and where you came from, right, as a soul. Mm. So let that be in tune. Mm -hmm. Let yeah. that be in tune. Mm. And then everything is a beautiful rhythm. Yeah. Absolutely. Why should I put that? So, so again, you're in the station, you're holding your lantern. A lot of people come up to you. Yeah. And they're saying, okay, look, you know, they, they, they're asking, what kind of questions do they ask him? This kind of is England. Yeah. People yeah, yeah. are very respectful. Yeah. You know? But you must get people, must get, that, yeah. I mean, this, pe people are respectful generally. Well, hmm. I'll be fair. There was a, a cabbie, uh -huh. uh, a London taxi driver, who, when I got off the car, he says, who are you? <laughs> and he said, <laughs> oh, what is that lamp? And I explained to him, and he was like, whoa, can I get your number? And I was like, yeah, you know, that's fine. You that's know, that's but, an unusual response, that's for sure. Right. Yeah. But what's yeah. interesting, he, he chose not to charge me for the cab. Wow. Mm. Do you know that's the rarest of things in London, right? A free cab ride. Yeah. <laughs> but that's extraordinary. So what, what, what did you converse with him about that made him feel so, so incredibly generous, really? Because, you know, that's sure. not... Again, I don't mean to stereotype any taxi drivers out there. I respect <laughs> you guys immensely. But you don't get free rides very often. No. So what, 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 did you, what was the connection? The connection was not verbally. It was the aura, the sense... See, even in a dark room, if you light a match, you'll still see, it may be a small piece of light, but you'll still see the light. Hmm. In the same way, when we try to manifest beauty and light, even a cabbie 
will recognize this. That so much so, he's, money doesn't mean anything to uh -huh. him. He mm. wants more of that. And where does this come from? Uh -huh. This comes from the love mm. for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, for our Creator and everything that's beautiful. Mm. You see, now we sense, can you sense it? Yes, can, absolutely. This is what we need to get back to, the old, mm. the ancient, absolutely. Well, in the modern. One of the things that kind of brought you to prominence uh, in within with the UK was obviously your work uh, last year, uh, well, a couple of Ramadans ago on Channel 4, where you were doing the Azan, which was, I imagine, quite the honor. It was, it was, uh, that was that, but we need more. Yes, uh, absolutely. See, that's the call uh, to, uh, to Allah and His, and his, and his religion. Mm -hmm on one channel, big deal. Uh -huh. Let's move on and get on to more channels because channeling, channeling. I love it, wordplay. Yeah. Right? It's, it's about, that's our prerogative is to channel goodness. Uh -huh. So mm. one channel, any more channels? Uh -huh. You know, let's do more. We, it's, we are the mainstream actually. It's not mm. about, you know, there's this misconception yeah, like, yeah, yeah. oh, the, the mainstream and, and whatever other independent stream. No, 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 no. Everyone has a playing field, mm -hmm. okay? And we need to get a piece of that because we got some beauty to, to bring to the table. Oh, certainly. And I see, you know, Mashallah, you know, your, your recitation, Mashallah. I mean, well, I'm trying to think how many years I've, I've known you and how many times I've heard that, that beautiful recite. I still remember the first time we met, actually, <laughs> with your recitation, Mashallah. Um, but w w w which, w w out of all the places you've performed, so I know you've performed in some, some amazing places, whether it be Royal Albert Hall, whether it was at Eton uh, 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 College, what was the highlight for you? Which is the one place that you enjoyed the most? You know, there are moments in privacy which I don't want that moment to end. Hmm. Those are the moments which you can't, you know, you can't measure, hmm. you can't capture. They're yeah. just blissful moments. And I try and take that with me hmm. into a public uh, scenario. Yeah. Okay. Because I think the responsibility, the earnest is on the reciter to impart this divine word yeah. in mm -hmm. the best possible way. Mm. And I feel strongly it's got a lot of hard work to do behind the scenes rather than just 10 minutes on stage. Mm. That's a lot of responsibility is what you're describing in, because, mm. you know, as you're saying, this is, you know, something you're trying to transmit, but it's divine. It's beyond all of us, obviously. Yes. But you've got the responsibility to purvey this. Well, we all do. Yes, of because course. Because we all do in different ways. Of course. Because your smile mm -hmm. and your mannerisms with people, that's Qur'an. You see, the way you, you treat your wife, that's Qur'an. The way you handle and you, you are kind to your children, this is Qur'an. The way you are with your boss and your colleagues and the trust, this is Qur'an. Qur'an is ev mm. this, so it's, it's not just of the course, recitation. No, of course not. Absolutely. You see? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I tell you, we're talking about recitations. Mm. It, would be, it would just be wonderful if we could get you to recite a little piece for us. Would you be so kind? Of course. Oh, wonderful. Thank there you. we go. So this is what we, uh, we were really hoping to hear, a little bit of recitation. Uh, mm. Please, if you, if you would. Bismillah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن Mm. 